Greetings. Today we're going to discuss mole conversions, converting from moles to grams to liters. But before we do that, I want to show you a little video clip on conversions. What are you doing, Missy? I'm getting ready to convert moles into liters. What do you think of that? That sounds cool, Missy. All right. Abracadabra. Abracadabra. Whoa. Liters! There you go. Liters. What are you doing now, Missy? I'm going to convert liters into particles. Abracadabra. Abracadabra. Whoa. Particles. That's cool. What do you know? So, as you have already seen, conversion implies turning something into something else or changing from one state or condition to another. So, we are going to do this now, not in the magic sense, but now we're going to do it in the numerical sense. We are going to begin these conversions by using what we know about dimensional analysis and applying it. All right, so we're not only going to convert moles, particles, and liters, we're also going to convert mass. So I left that off here, but we're also going to convert masses. But let's write some of the conversion factors we're going to use. These conversion factors are really equivalences. So in other words, if I say that we know that one mole of anything equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. And when we talk about particles in chemistry, we are talking about atoms, molecules, ions. All right, another conversion factor that we know is that the molar mass of a substance is equal to one mole of that substance. So the molar mass in grams, that would be grams, so the molar mass is equal to one mole of anything. We're also going to learn, this is a new conversion that you're going to learn about, that one mole of a gas at standard temperature and pressure, one mole of any gas at STP, standard temperature and pressure, is equal to 22, or occupies 22.4 liters. Using this, what we know, we can make all of these conversions and use these as conversion factors. So I can, I can write this as a conversion factor. I can write one mole of whatever is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Or I can flip this around and say 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles, let's say it's atoms, is equal to one mole of atoms. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd chickens equals one mole of chickens. Doesn't matter what. All right, I can also write this conversion pack factor as one mole. Say I'm talking about uh, the molar mass of oxygen, and the molar mass of oxygen is uh, 16.00 times 2, so 32.000 grams. That's the molar mass. Or I can flip it and say, and this is O2, always write the substance, and or you can say 32. 0.00 grams of O2 divided by one mole of O2. And finally, I can do this one as well. We'll uh, put it down up here since I don't have any more room. Uh, we can say one mole of any gas at STP, say it's um, helium gas, at STP occupies 22.4 liters.
Or I could flip that and say 22.4 liters over one mole. So these are the conversion factors that we're going to use in order to solve these problems. All right, so going back to my um, STP problem, standard temperature and pressure, what does that mean? Well, standard temperature and pressure is abbreviated STP. It means standard temperature and pressure. And standard temperature is equal to zero degrees Celsius. And standard pressure is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, which is also equal to one atmosphere. Okay. And why do I have these beautiful pictures of Tampa Bay? Uh, this is the Bay Shore here. This is uh, an aerial photograph of the Bay Shore. This is the this is the Skyway Bridge. This is a beach here in in the Tampa Bay area or close by. So why do I have these pictures? Well, because as you can see, Tampa is at sea level. So when we say STP, at least the pressure is about. 760 millimeters of pressure. So if we were uh, doing calculations, say, in Colorado or on a mountain anywhere where it wasn't at sea level, then we would have to adjust these numbers. But standard temperature and pressure means that the temperature is at zero degrees Celsius and 760 millimeters of mercury, which is about the average in uh, at sea level. All right, so let's try some calculations now. Let us try the following calculations. I have 12.6 grams of CO2 that I want to convert to moles. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down my uh, the numbers given, and I'm looking for moles. This is my question mark. I put it here. Moles just so that I know, and I have 12.6, that's what's given, and I'm going to put that, I'm going to do my railroad tracks, and I'm going to put that over 1, this is grams of CO2, notice that I'm also going to make sure that I write the um, substance that I'm looking for, and I'm going to go from grams to moles, so right away I'm going to put the units, and don't worry about the numbers yet, we're going to just write the units. All right, what conversion factor? Now, you can stop and go back, but we know that one conversion factor that I can use is that one mole of CO2 of CO2 is equivalent to the molar mass of CO2, which would be one carbon times its molar mass, its mass, um, and two oxygens times its mass, and then add it together, and that gives me 44 point zero zero grams. Punch in my numbers. Remember we're dividing. So 12.6 divided by 44 grams is equivalent to 0 0.286 moles of CO2. We always, always write the units. Complete units. And box in our answer. And uh, notice that we are now converting, we're doing moles to mass conversion, another uh, conversion using moles and grams. I'm going to start out with question mark. What am I looking for? I am looking for grams of N2O4. Please write the compound that you're looking for. And I have 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6 moles of N2O4 from railroad tracks, and I want to go to grams, because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for grams of N2O4, and I have here, I calculated, so let's calculate that. So I know that N is equal to 2 moles times 14.01, grams per mole, and O, and there's four of them, 
four moles. This is just like your calculated molar mass times 16.00 grams per mole. And I know that this is equivalent to 28.02 grams. And this is equivalent to 64.00 grams. And my grand total is 92.02 grams of N2O. So now I'm going to use these numbers, and I want to put moles here. One mole is equivalent to 92.02 grams of N2O4 dinitrogen tetroxide. And my final answer comes to 2.3 times 10 to the negative 4 grams N2O4. And I'm going to box in my answer. And I have succeeded in calculating turning this moles into grams. All right, let's try this problem now. Uh, 6.92 times, that's a big times right there, times 10 to the 25th atoms of copper to moles. So particles to moles is what I'm going to now. So question mark, I'm going to start with, I'm looking for moles of Cu. I have 6.92 times 10 to the 25th atoms, fifth atoms of copper. And you can put a one over this, uh, under this. You can do that. What's given under one. I haven't done that, but um, you can. And I know that I want to go to moles. So do I know a conversion factor that takes me from atoms to moles? I sure do. I know that one mole is equivalent to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles, or atoms in this case, of Cu. So moles of Cu and atoms, moles of Cu and atoms of Cu. So in this case, I'm going to divide, because it's right down here. So <clears throat> I'm going to say 6.92 times 10 to the 25th, uh, divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and that's going to give me 115 moles of Cu. That's in my answer. And we are done with that one. All right, let's try another problem. So this time we are going to convert moles to particles. This time we're going to go moles to molecules because they are particles as well. So I'm going to say, Question mark, I'm looking for molecules, molecules of NO2. So in that many moles, how many molecules are there? So I know that I'm going to start out with what's given, which is 0 0.050 moles of NO2. That's what's given. And... I am going to go from cancel out moles of NO2 to I want to go to molecules of NO2. I know that in one mole I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of anything, in this case, molecules. So my moles are going to cancel out, moles of N2, moles of N2 will cancel out. I will multiply 0 0.50 times 10, I'm sorry, times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And keep in mind that when you punch these numbers into the calculator, you're going to say EE, -E, you're going to punch 6.022 EE, -E, 10 to the 23rd. Depending on what calculator you have, in some cases it's second EE. Don't punch in times 10 because you'll get the wrong answer. So EE to the 23rd. All right, so moles, moles cancel. 
I end up with uh, my final answer, which is 3.0 times 10 to the 22nd molecules, always write your units, molecules of NO2. It's super important that you write these so that it, there's no confusion. Box in your answer, better box than I can do with this. Okay, and you are done. All right, and um, this I believe is our final uh, problem. We're going to go from liters to moles. So we know, uh, question mark, that we are looking for moles, moles of air. We have 25 liters of air. But this has to be at standard temperature and pressure. So as long as it is at standard temperature and pressure, I can, I can trust in my one, my conversion that one mole of any gas occupies 22.4 liters at STP. Standard temperature and pressure. So right now we're going to assume that this is what they're asking us at standard temperature and pressure. So I'm going to say liters and I want, and I want moles. So whatever I don't want, I'm going to cross out down here. So I know that one mole of any gas occupies 22.4 liters. Check out my box in my room. Ask me about it in class. Um, when I see you next, because I have a very nice box that depicts this number and it helps you to visualize it. So liters cancels liters. We are left with moles of air. Okay, air that we're looking for. This is air. All right, so our answer is going to be 1.1 liters, that's a point, liters of air. Box in your answer, and we are good to go. Go forth and convert uh, chemicals. I am Mrs. Z, and I approve this message.